Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. This is the Clutter Fairy Weekly for November 28th, 2023. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, certified professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. The Clutter Fairy Weekly is the webcast and podcast that digs deep into the clutter that piles up between you and the life that you want to be living. We explore the habits and behaviors that lead to clutter, and we suggest strategies to slow the accumulation, reduce the collection, and comfortably manage the stuff we decide to keep. If you're new to our Zoom meeting, we want to let you know that you can share your comments and questions via the chat feature, and I'll try to make sure Gail addresses them before we move on to another topic. You can also use the raise hand feature if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment yourself via audio or video. And we're streaming the webcast live on Facebook, so you can share your questions and comments there, and I'll relay them to Gail. We're going to start by recapping the weekly tittle from two weeks ago, which was called Shake It Up. The assignment was to pry loose an area of your home that's been stuck mm -hmm. in a rut for a while. Let's hear from our participants in Zoom and on Facebook. Who revisited or revised a, a stuck place in your home this week? please let us know in the comments. We didn't get any responses over the last two weeks that specifically addressed this tittle, which I thought was interesting. It, it seemed like a relatively easy one. Uh, but I thought I'd share my favorite comment on our last show, which was about the language we use to talk about clutter and to give ourselves encouragement in our efforts. This one came from YouTube viewer Serendipity. Serendipity <laughs> also, she, she also gets credit for uh, a really fun screen name. Right. Serendipity contributed the acronym SLOB, which she says stands for So Long Old Baggage. <laughs> I really like transforming the word SLOB into something so much more positive and affirming, first of all. That part, I mean, it makes you laugh when you say it, but then you're, the acronym is for something very positive. And the fact that it talks about letting go of old baggage is a bonus way to think about decluttering. Decluttering is definitely all about letting go of old baggage, emotionally, emotional baggage, as well as physical. And this acronym is much deeper than it seems at first glance because we start out laughing. But when you think about for a minute what so long old baggage can mean, it's a really profound statement about what it means to be decluttering your life. Thanks, Sharon, for sharing it. I thought it was very um, funny and very apropos. So we appreciate your um, adding it to our list of acronyms. It's a good one. Lisa Beth says, I decided to tackle my room of doom. Don't, or, don't organize, only move. Uh -huh. And tackle the room that fluctuates as kids move in and out of college and from apartments to apartment to house and miscellaneous. That is always a, you know, a bold project, right? Because it becomes the doom room um, when it's a big stack and it's very overwhelming. So I'm proud of you for tackling it. And, you know, I recognize that kids moving in and out, kids going off to college and then coming home and then maybe or maybe not going to their first apartment. There's some transition action happening there, but um, you can still manage the stuff so that it's not so overwhelming for you or for them when it's time for them to move out again. So good job, you, you know, pair it down to the stuff that everybody actually wants to have and get rid of anything that is being carted around because nobody wants to look at it and <laughs> spend the time to look at it and make it go away. And I think you'll be, um, you'll be satisfied with getting it done. <laughs> Mary C says, my storage unit is in process. Toys to Ronald McDonald house. Furniture will go to auction, consignment, or charity. Very good. That is awesome. Tis the season where you can work on it and not, you know, fry, <laughs> not cook like you're in a hot box. So um, this is a perfect time of year to be doing it. And it's great to send it off in the spirit of the season and thinking about harvest and thinking about being thankful and thinking about, you know, it's Christmas time and everybody feels extra generous. And so if you're doing it in that, in that moment, you're just helping yourself be part of the season. And ultimately you're going to get out of that storage unit and you're going to not pay that rent anymore. And won't you be super thrilled about that? So we're well, here cheering for you. And especially a great big brava to Mary, if that, if that's a place where you've been stuck, because you know, the, the, 
the assignment of the tittle we were talking about you know i'm going to reorganize this end of the credenza that's what that's what i did i organized th reorganized this end of the credenza so it right right better. so if you used our tittle as a way to get yourself into that storage unit good for you that's fantastic right and storage units are very they're always very overwhelming and intimidating because the the joy of the storage unit is that you can just throw stuff in there and close the door and walk away and never and you don't have to look at it and so it takes some extra oomph to get you back in front of the storage unit and to open it up and to then deal with the chaos that you made in filling it up and so good for you that you're facing all of those obstacles and all those things that make it hard and um, you're going to end up with the end result which is money back in your pocket because you're not going to have to pay the rental fee anymore so we are here cheering you on go team go come and tell us how it goes <clears throat> paula says didn't revive a stuck place but am practicing one in one out this week have a oh. couple boxes by the door to go off to the thrift store this afternoon excellent so head on down to the thrift store with the stuff doesn't have to be a big box. You can still make a quick trip and drop it off. And most of the time, those thrift stores have somebody that will come out to the car and get it for you. And so take advantage. Make it go away. Good team. El Wendo says, funny you ask, on my way to landfill as you speak. <laughs> Lis listening and loving your podcast. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you're here to listen to us. And how great that you're, you know, actually running an errand related to organizing while you're listening to the podcast. So we're cheering for you as well. Y'all are doing great today. M says, I identified some stuck areas, but was unable to make much progress. On reflection, I think that is because I am stuck in a rut of behavior patterns that create the blockade of clutter. Mm, good point. Although it is a step to identify the areas, that is, you know, the basic step one, what are the areas that are a problem? What are the areas that you want to work on? If you're thinking about what's in the way, how they're being created, that's also part of the process. So good for you for noticing what's getting in your way and what's slowing you down and um, and maybe having that come to Jesus meeting with yourself about it. You know, this, this is how I'm contributing to my own stuckness. And these are the areas that I need to address to try to make movement about that and recognize that. If you identify a whole bunch of behaviors that you think are a problem, you can't address them all simultaneously and at once. And so just like we always say, pick some place to start. You can pick one of the things that you have identified in your in your self-reflection yeah. and, and focus on one thing being different. And I will tell you that you don't have to move the needle a lot to have a big impact down the road. We've all had that experience of you make a minor change, you know, the the the, the storyline about the butterfly who flaps their wings and way over here, something really big happens. And it's a hurricane. Right. Right. There is no step that is that shifts that is too small to not have some impact down the line. And so it's worth picking one and focusing on one and trying to make it different. And well, Trying and to stick with making it different. I would also like to applaud M for identifying some stuck areas. Okay, mm -hmm. you didn't make progress much progress yet, but you did this, the step of identification, mm -hmm. and you've done the reflection. You said you mentioned re you reflecting on why you couldn't get to the next thing, and recognizing behavior patterns. So that's great. Now maybe jot down the behaviors that you think are contributing to your blockade mm -hmm, and, right. and then, and pick one, pick one behavior to, to focus on a, 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 an un, unproductive or unconstructive habit that you'd like to eliminate or a constructive or productive habit you feel desperately in need of. And just focus on that one little behavior, one thing. Mm -hmm. People have already mentioned uh, one in, two out a couple of times in, you know, in some of our prep materials, um, just going through the process of when I bring one thing in, I immediately pull two things to go out is, is a very small act that 
triggers you. I bought things today. That means I need to let two things go. And it triggers you to stop for five minutes and pick those two things and put it in the box by the door, getting ready to go to the thrift shop. Right. And so <clears throat> even something as small as that, we'll be taking things out of the house uh, that you don't need to have anymore and, and making a shift in your environment. So we are here for you. The, the clutter fairy audience is here for you and we will support Support you however you need to keep um, in moving forward to make forward motion here. Connie says, by the way, I thought about your famous saying, Gail, not only thinning the herd, but also thinning the horde. <laughs> That's a good modification. I don't usually say that, but I can see how that would be, you know, that would be appropriate. It would go for some of it. I don't want to assume that you have a hoard, so I wouldn't say that to you, but you can certainly say it about yourself if you feel like it's appropriate to describe your environment. I don't want to make that judgment call without being able to see it and, and to uh, have a conversation with you about it. So, um, but you guys can self-identify if you would like <laughs> that you have a hoard. <laughs> That's funny. Lisa Beth says the huge boxes from the 10 foot Christmas tree were near the door and made it seem overwhelming. I'm mm. going to use the room half for storage. So, so they can shop there. And the other side I get for crafts. Niz says I removed a dozen boxes from storage unit was, but due to disability only was able to haul 10 boxes up the stairs to my apartment. M wrote a follow-up note saying the identification of the areas was enlightening because they had become part of the scenery it was an important right? step yeah <clears throat> darn right that's totally true because we just get used to what we do like you just you make a pile and you walk away and then it's there every day and it just becomes part of the background noise right and so there is a there is something to be said for getting conscious of your surroundings in a way that allows you to see things again and so that is an important step. I'm glad you noticed that. That is a very important step to get awake to, to what you're actually working with and what you're trying to clear. Good job. All right. This seems like a good place to head for our main topic. What do you think? I'm good. Go for it. Um, <clears throat> the new year is a great time to hit reset, to refresh your priorities, revisit your goals, and reconsider your habits and behaviors. The more thought you put into your reset process, the more success you're likely to achieve. Today, we're going to discuss how to hit reset on organizing projects, the pros and cons of resolutions, and tips for planning a successful Get Organized month. We're going to start out today with looking at the responses to the survey because you guys really came through on that. Um, <clears throat> we asked our audience to begin with, in most years, do you make at least one New Year's resolution? And 55% of you said, yes, you do. 31% of you said no, and then 14% said it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> and in answer to our follow-up question to elaborate why it's complicated, several of those who answered it's complicated explained that they set goals rather than resolutions. But oddly enough, some preferred the goals instead of resolutions because they offer more accountability, and others prefer goals because they provide less accountability. <laughs> so... <laughs> I guess it just comes down to how you, uh, how much power you want to give to the words, how you uh, view it. But um, we don't care what you set. <laughs> you can set goals. You can set resolutions. We don't care how you frame it. Whatever works for you. Whatever feels more supportive to you. Whatever feels more um, achievable to you. Gabriella offered one of our favorite responses to the follow-up question. She wrote, I don't make New Year's resolutions, but I set goals for each new year. For this year, I've also made a list of things I've accomplished, and I've picked out which habits I definitely want to keep. I think Gabriella is Gabriella is being really smart here. She's combining a review of what she succeeded at this year with what she wants to accomplish next year. I know there's plenty of negative self-talk to go around for everyone, so spending some time on what kind of accomplishments you've made this year is a really self-supporting thing to do. So acknowledge what improved, what you worked on and what improved your life this year, what you did that you're glad about experiencing. And doesn't that really create a positive point of view from which then to set new goals for the coming year? I think this is a really great process. So she's um, orienting her mind to 
uh, this is what I did well last year. This is what I want to keep from last year. This is what I accomplished from last year. And from that congratulatory place, that affirming place, she then turns around and makes her list of things to do um, to work on for the next year. And I think that's, we all tend to look back and go, these are all the places that I failed. This is all the stuff that didn't get done. These are it's all the things that, that went wrong. Yes. These are everything. This is all the things that went off the rails. Right. But can't really do anything about that. <laughs> so I think it's better. It's a better Gabriella's process is better because you go and review what worked and what you can be proud of and what you can feel like you accomplished. And, you know, we don't compliment ourselves very often or very well. And I think this is a way of complimenting yourself and uh, being supportive and of yourself. And I, I like it. I like that as a, as a point of view to stand in, to be kind to yourself and also to be in that place of um, positivity when you are thinking about what is coming up next year. I mean, if you make a list of uh, these are all the things that I failed at, Therefore, they need to be goals for next year. Like that, that feels terrible. That's just terrible po point of view. So let's do it differently. I did these things right. I added these habits. I've, I've changed these things and I'm glad about them. And what seems like a good goal for next year is a, is a much better place to be coming from. So thank you for sharing that process, Gabrielle. I think it's, it was very helpful. The next question that we asked was, how successful are you usually in keeping your New Year's resolutions? And 29% landed right in the middle with it can go either way, <laughs> which I'm sure we can all relate to. 23%, 23% reported being somewhat successful in keeping resolutions. 16% shared that they've been somewhat unsuccessful in keeping resolutions. 9% said they were completely unsuccessful. And a minuscule 1.3% reported complete success. So rah, rah to the 1.3% of you that claim success this year. <laughs> and then 22% said NA to this question. They're like, we don't even want to think about it. We're not answering this question. Forget it. <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious. And then next we asked our viewers and listeners two related questions. So the first question was, how would you like, how would you most like for 2024 to be different from 2023? And the follow-up question was, what do you plan to do to make your vision of 2024 come true? So we're going to share some uh, responses and talk about what we can learn from one another because everybody had some great um, answers to this question. So there was good things to be said. Let me give you, let me help you out with some of the reading. Diana shared the following goals. I have decluttered a lot of my house already. My next goals are declutter and reorganize our garage. Same for our indoor tool room. <laughs> and figure out what I want to do with my spacious craft room. For her plans, Diana wrote, pick a section to work on and start. Thinking of whole space like the garage is overwhelming. So first I just want to say, so wish I was playing with your spacious craft room. <laughs> right. I think, I think setting up craft rooms is so much fun. So wish I was there to do that. But <clears throat> Diana, you make a really good point about being overwhelmed by the larger goal. And this is when we talk about eating the elephant one bite at a time, which we were talking about in our acronym show, um, our saying show. You can reflect that in your goals by breaking down a big goal, which is in this case, you've stated as reorganize the garage into a bunch of smaller steps. And as a planning step, I would walk around the garage and notice what all you think needs to be done. So there's the pile of toxic chemicals that need to go to the environmental waste uh, disposal and there's a bunch of recycling needs to go and there's a bunch of Christmas stuff that needs to be gone through and you know Chris maybe ornaments need to be shipped to the kids and here's the tool bench that is covered in a million tools and total shrapnel and a mess and there's all the excess kitchen stuff that we slapped in the corner over there and you can walk around and see all of the sub projects that are happening in the garage because as we say, <laughs> garage is where things go to die <clears throat> and things are in there dying. So now you're going to have to go and address all of those um, places where things are dying and decide whether they can now move out of the garage or whether they still have to be on live support in the garage. So um, 
go and make a list without doing anything is what I'm saying. Go and stand in the garage, walk around, dig around and see, you know, what kinds of projects are actually happening there because you can't do them all at once. And never can in the garage unless you have a team of, you know, six. So you you need to go in there and make a list of what all needs to be done. And that's going to be a good place for you to say, okay, so today we're going to worry about toxic chemicals and I'm going to load all those up in the car and take them off. And I'm going to pull them from everywhere that I can see them or however you want to, in whatever order you want to do the pieces, but figure out what those subsets are first before in make those small steps make those elephant bites one bite at a time list so that you can go to that list every time you're going to go work in the garage and do the next thing on the list okay jane shared these goals i have financial and decluttering goals that align in addition to continuing my decluttering practice of one in two out resulting in more conscious shopping practices I also plan to continue decluttering the garage with the goal of hitting every area at least once in 2024, one full layer of the onion peeled. Uh, For her plans, Jane offered, the one in two out practice will be continuous and I've already put some 2024 dates on my calendar for working on the garage decluttering effort. I love that. That's awesome. You're certainly setting yourself up to get going in the new year, Jane. That's very good. Calendaring time to work on your project and aiming for a whole garage handled as a goal sounds doable to me. And I love the idea of thinking of the garage, completing the garage as being one full layer of the onion peel. That's a great visual. I like that a lot. It is, um, everybody's, uh, Achilles heel, I think, is to deal with a garage because we can avoid it so easily. And we put so many things out there that we don't care about. And so it is a, um, it's an overwhelming box. It is our in-home storage unit. And, um, you know, as a team, you guys are all thinking about garage this year. I think that's fascinating. So go team, go, let's empty out some garages this year. I need to do the same thing. And so I I have some stuff that needs to go off to, um, art asylum i have a collection <clears throat> and it's annoying me because it's getting big so it's time to go make a delivery to them and i have other stuff in there too that doesn't need to be there anymore so i just need to get in there and do the garage project with you guys so let's work on it while we can before it gets too hot and let's make a dent in the garage and report back <laughs> Jetta identified three goals <clears throat> she wants to tackle more consistent exercise and healthy eating Manage my calendar better. Don't schedule so much to where it'll overwhelm me. Mm. And clear out the stash of pictures under my printer stand. To accomplish these goals, Jetta plans the following. She's going to remember that, she says, remember that I could put my health before the wants of others. Slow down before scheduling and ask myself some questions to to determine if I really want or need to do something. Mm. and regarding the pictures just take out the pictures and do something (laughs) these are some fabulous goals putting yourself first for your health managing your schedule to prevent overwhelm those are great goals and i appreciate that you've created goals about putting yourself first those first two are definitely about putting you in front of other people and honoring your own health and well-being and so those are great goals to to start with and then you throw in something super practical about the photos and i can tell that you've added it to the list because it's annoying you that it's there the photos are definitely annoying you so taking care of annoying things is also self-care because when it's done it will no longer be a thorn in your side and that is a good thing so um, it seems like your 2024 is all about taking care of yourself in uh, all kinds of ways so love the list it's great and i really like that you're like the photos i just need to do something with the photos something (laughs) something to be done and and in the clutter world of everything counts you know what that something is you can come and tell us what you've done and we will cheer for you well and she is she says stash of pictures i assume she's talking about photos yeah um and so Maybe the something, it, depending on how early she is in this process, the something, the do something to start with might be do a quick keep toss pass just to get rid of the junk. Because 
-hmm. if it's if it's photos you know there's there's going to be some there's going to be junk in there There, right right there's definitely six photos of the same of the same thing and only two of them are any good (laughs) yeah Uh, yeah yeah exactly yeah so you can thin the herd right like that's the first pass it's easy um that you can get rid of duplications we've talked about photos before there's always duplications there's always things that are the photo isn't good there's you know 50 photographs of the same birthday party and you can keep 10 and so you can go through that process a few photos at a time until you actually get all the way through and won't you be excited when they're not there anymore (laughs) okay linda's goal is to get the get at the clutter she's been hiding linda writes most of my rooms are visibly fine, but I run hot and cold on decluttering hidden spaces. Mm. In most rooms, there's no visible clutter, but oh my, what's left to do in my drawers and cupboards. I need to be more consistent and just start with one drawer. I know I feel calmer in a peaceful room, but as the vis- visible portions of my rooms are fine, I don't have the motivation to work on my drawers and cupboards. Help. <laughs> Linda says her plan is to take a hint from Santa, make a list and check it off twice. So I'll be nice, not naughty. <laughs> uh, resistance is where the value of written objectives, to do lists, and checklists come in. Making that list and scratching off things is some gaming incentive to get things done. And I, and I have to say, there's probably some amount of your decluttering that you've done by you've decluttered by taking it off of the open spaces and putting it in the drawers and the cabinets you put it you've hidden things instead of decluttering some of it and so i'm guessing you're going to open a drawer or cabinet and find things that you have previously taken off the counter taken off the coffee table taken off the floor and stashed in a cupboard or a a drawer and so you're going to have to I'm, i'm suspecting that the resistance is some like Oh gosh, I have to make some final final decisions, and and there there may be some resistance because of that. Just remember that a drawer is small, a cupboard is small um, by comparison, and y- you can it's a doable quantity, it's a doable size for one sitting or a weekend or something that you go in and work on a cupboard. And so, um, go team, go, <laughs> you can do it. And I think. If you open a drawer, you may it may be incentive if you open the drawer and leave it open so that you can see the chaos. <clears throat> because I think what motivated you in the open spaces was your ability to see it. And what has demotivated you about these drawers and cupboards is that you can't see it. And so let's m- open a drawer, make it visible so and leave it open so that it yells at you. And then after you've looked, walked by it a few times and it's over there yelling at you, you may feel more motivated to do it. And you don't have to open all the drawers and cupboards at once, right? You just all have to one at a time. So let's open one drawer and stare at it (laughs) and leave it open and walk around the house and see, you know, at what point does it annoy you enough to go and do something about it and see if we can't get past that, uh, past that resistance that way. Okay, Suzanne's goal is a home update. She says, I would like to bring my environment into the 2020s or at least into this millennium. (laughs) I would like for clutter not to have a starring role in deciding yes or no to activities or opportunities. Regarding regarding plans, Suzanne says, painting the walls and or changing the flooring would go very far in my vision. I plan to start painting in 2024. So then you have a larger goal that makes decluttering a priority, right? If you want to paint, you'll be moving things around so that you can get to the wall. So clearing out excess before that happens will make painting painting an easier job so that you're not dooming your room. You're not moving things around. And so freshening up stuff before you freshen up the paint is a great plan and you'll love the end result. So if you can clear some things out, before you try to move everything away from the wall to paint, um, you're going to make putting the wall, the room back together better, easier, because there's less stuff in there. And if you're going to move everything around, it's your opportunity to decide, I don't need this extra piece of furniture in here. I can, I have to move it away from the wall to paint anyway. Might as well get it out of that room permanently. So aiming to paint the walls is a perfect setup to incentivize you to go through stuff 
and make uh, bigger decisions about what needs to stay and try to get some stuff out of your way before you start painting. Can't wait to hear how it goes. It's a good goal. Okay, I'm going to give one more set of survey responses because it's a little unusual. Kate offered this interesting and unusual goal. Kate says, I would like to dispense with verbal clutter to some degree. Hmm. And as her plan to accomplish this goal, Kate says, I want to listen more and speak less. I'll try and really hear others and give people time to develop their thoughts. I tend to jump in, talk about myself, or looking for a funny line while planning what I will say next. It's not good and it clutters the airwaves. So in 2024, better conversations, fewer cluttering sound bites. That's a new perspective. And this was this encourages us to think about what we have in our heads and our hearts and decide what's worthy of being there. I think listening more will be a fabulous learning experience and it's bound to make you feel closer to the people, um, to those to whom you will listen more. The process that you described of thinking about the funny line, thinking about what you're going to say next, sometimes it reflects a level of uh, discomfort or nervousness when you're in conversation with somebody. And I get that way. I, when the more nervous I feel, the more chatty I get. <laughs> like, la, 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 la. And, and I have often thought to myself, okay, now is not the time to be chatty. Now's the time to be quiet. And you can listen to the other person talk for a while. Well, and she's describing what, I guess, behavioral psychologists or social workers and such refer to as active listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which has a very, you know, it has the goal of making you more present with the person so that right. you are more fully in the moment and experiencing um, really what's happening instead of projecting in your head what's coming next and missing the moment going by. I think you'll find it super enriching that you can spend that time with people and you'll still be able to say your funny lines occasionally. <laughs> right. You, you still have to worry about it quite as much and you can let other people talk to and, and, and you'll find um, some wonderful things happening for you because of that. Can't wait to hear how that goes. I like that. I, I thought that was a really, really thoughtful mm -hmm. response from Kate. Thank you for mm -hmm. that, Kate. Um, I think we, it's easy to think about, all kinds of practical stuff when we're considering how we would like next year to be different. Mm. But we can also look at how would I like the Here's inside my of life. my head to be different? How would I like yeah, you know, yeah. what I care what I carry around inside inside me to be different? Yeah. What exactly. which which stuff is uh which stuff is sl <laughs> slob <laughs> so long old baggage. Right. Very good What's, point. <laughs> how can I take a slob look at myself? <laughs> <laughs> we want you to be doing it in a positive way. So don't forget what slob means. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so let's talk about some strategies for planning how you okay. want 2024 to be different. All right, I did try to write down some um, ways to make, to how to set goals and what to consider in the process. So um, the first one I'm going to offer is start from where you are right now. And I said this earlier, if you've been working on it and you feel like you didn't get as far as you wanted, or it seems like it just grew bigger last year, move the starting line to where you are right now. Release any judgments about how your efforts worked out last year and start truly fresh as if you just began on the, pro on the project day one of this year. So it's a it's a brand new project. It's a new year and it's a new project. And whatever happened last year is what happened last year. And, and now we don't care because now it's a new project and we're going to start from right where you are right now. So um, let's release whatever a lingering um, meanness you have happening in your head about how it didn't work out. And let's just move that start line right up to where you are right now. Also consider your planning style. If you like making detailed plans with timelines and multiple steps outlined, then go for it. Map those plans and create your path for 2024. If you're not a big detailed planner, then aim for something different. Pick two or three larger projects to work on in the year. Set a repeatable monthly goal like, I'll spend each month in one area of my home, so you'll have 12 areas to define, and work to declutter and clear out that area. 
The goal is to reduce the volume of things and, and the, reduce the volume of things out of place to 50% of its current level. Or I'd like to make a trip to donation once per month at the end of each month this year. As you work that month in your chosen area, you can make a task list then that's related to that area at the beginning of each month. So either you can make these huge detail plans up front or you can start with the bigger goal and make smaller steps towards it as you go along during the year and do a recurring thing. I'm going to go every month to do X, Y, Z. So consider how you respond to planning and how comfortable you are with planning. And if you're not a big, if you're not big on all the long involved details, you know, I have friends that happily sit and make endless lists of steps and that kind of makes my head explode. So <laughs> think about it the way that you are comfortable working on it and you can still have some goals and you can still make some headway. Let me share a comment from Ginger because Ginger is definitely toward one end of the spectrum of, okay. st of organizing styles. Ginger says every year I create an annual plan with action steps across a few life categories self, family, home, finances, papers, photos, and hobbies. Last year was a big pause on life as we dealt with lots of major health issues and family loss. Mm. And so your plan got derailed, right? Okay. And, and Ginger's describing a very elaborate thought process with lots of steps. And she, and she said, I saw that go by. I'm a planner, right? And so some people find comfort in planning and in elaborating all of the steps. And some people find that overwhelming. And so I just want you to consider what works for you in terms of you don't have to be Ginger if that makes you uncomfortable. And Ginger doesn't have to, you know, not make the list because she finds that helpful. So do what works for you is what we're yeah, saying. I think, uh, you know, as kind of a, a list maker myself with mm. thousands and thousands of items. On, yes. On you list, <laughs> um, the, the list helps me feel like I'm not letting anything slip through the cracks. Yes. You know, that's, that's the comfort of a list for me. Right. And and it's a decluttering project, right? So you're making lists about work and clients and things that you have to get done for people that are, people are paying you to do. And, and also household chores and- Yeah, things like that, stuff. right? I, I even put fun stuff on lists, you know, things, things that I would do even, things that I don't even need to be reminded to do still go on lists for the pleasure <laughs> of checking it off. <laughs> You like the gamification of lists, right? I do. Yeah. You like that scratch off. And and there is something, you know, there is scientific evidence that, you know, having something on a list and scratching it off creates a, a satisfaction response that is real. And so there's something to be said for that. You just need to do it at the level that doesn't completely intimidate you and shut you down. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you are a big list guy. It's for sure. Um, I will also say work on it now, work on your planning now before the year in so that you can think about your intentions before the new year arrives with all of its performance fresher, right? Like if you do it on New Year's Eve, it's like, oh God, oh God, what's going on the list? And tomorrow I got to get started. Well, you don't have to do it under that pressure. Um, if you think about it now, you can um, be a little bit more leisurely about thinking about it and you can spend a little bit more time mulling it over in your head before you commit to the list. So work on it now. I, I also think it's important to keep in mind that the new year, January 1st, is an arbitrary day that somebody <laughs> decided the year starts. There's no right. reason the year couldn't start on August 14th or <laughs> November 28th or any other day of your choosing. And so don't get hung up on the date. And if life is too chaotic when January 1st gets here, plan your big rollout on January 5th or right or the uh, 15th right yeah or December 18th or something yeah exactly yeah we can there's no uh there's no uh new year's resolution police so we can we can do it how it makes it work for you right I want to share a comment from M mm -hmm. I, I I love this suggestion okay M, M says I have a friend whose photos are all arranged chronologically um, I think most of us, our phones will, our phones will do that if we have, you know, we're keeping digital 
photos on our phone or computer. Right. Every day, he looks at all the digital photos from that date from other years and discards the ones that are not good or not wanted. Oh. It, also, it also gives him a mini life review to think about each day. Isn't that interesting? So he goes back to today's date in prior years and looks at the photos and then thins them out. What yeah, a great and- way to constantly be. You're adding new photos today and you're taking off old photos from prior years. Well, so it, that's it, definitely a one in one out rule, right? And it's biting off only one 365th of the, of the backlog. Right. It's a very, that's a very manageable bite to take unless you take hundreds of photos a day. And, but it, uh, it, it is very, it's like a finite manageable time commitment that isn't overly long, right? Like you can go through a day's worth of photos and you don't, you're not going to be sitting there for four hours, right? Yeah. And in a year, he'll have a, he'll have a pretty clean, tight library of only photos that he wants to keep. Right. That's really good. I like it. Cause we do take lots of photos and, oh, look, I took a picture of that label so I could read it. And, yeah. there, you know, there's things like that in there that really you don't have to keep and, and yeah. you just don't go, go back to delete it later. So I often job. take. I often snap off 10 or 12 photos of a dog trying to get one where they're holding still in a, in a decent position. Right. You can actually see what they look like. (laughs) Dogs don't like to slow down long enough for you to take a photo. No, they do not. It's true. Cats actively work to avert you, uh, avert being, having their photos taken as well. Right. Okay. Okay, So um, you want to share your planning and your areas of work, the things that you're going to work on with someone that you trust to give you feedback. We want to notice if you're being overly eager or ambitious and perhaps, or uh, perhaps not challenging yourself enough. So see how your list, once you've made it, your goals, resolutions, whatever you're making, see how that list looks to an outside evaluator. You don't have to make any changes that they suggest, but it will be good to get an objective opinion to help you view the list with less bias. The only goal here is to right size your goals and your expectations of yourself so that they're reasonably achievable with some dedicated work on your part. Um, sometimes we're overly ambitious and, you know, often people say, oh yeah, hi Gail, I want you to come and declutter my house and it's um, December 1st and I want to be done by the end of the year. And I go to the house and it's like, oh, that's not happening. <laughs> the end of next year, maybe, but not the end of this year. So I think we um, are over ambitious and we expect to be able to get a huge amount of work done despite our own commitments of time and our own life and our own work and everything else and it's my job to say you know that goal is not consistent with the amount of time that you have to work on the project it's not consistent with how dense the house is Um, a, a more realistic timeline here is not six weeks but 16 months And so having that uh, reality check from someone outside to look at your list and go, are you crazy? You can't get all this stuff done in the next six months, or you can't do all that in one month. You need to do this over three months just to give you an idea of how it looks to someone else will help you uh, maybe revise that a little bit to be more realistic. Be open to revising your plans over time in case your life interferes, just like somebody said a minute ago or in case it goes much better than you predict right now. Sometimes we think that that, you know, doom room is going to be awful. And then we dig in and realize, you know, 50% of it's empty boxes and we're able to get it done in two weeks instead of two months. So be open to, I've made this plan and, uh, oh my gosh, I'm doing much better. Or, oh my gosh, I got COVID and I've been taken out for two months and that's going to mess with the plan. So you can revise the plan and sort of re- restart it, re- right, stored it, start it again if you have to in order to make it reflect what's actually been happening. Ginger has a, a relevant comment uh, on that point. Uh, she says, for home, my biggest project will be to go through mom's suite here. She passed last December, and I gave myself a year to deal with it all. I have a plan to go through her things one category at a time with help from family. That's good. And there's nothing, again, there's nothing magic about the fact that it's a year, but you have, you know, you have spent a year and hopefully um, gotten a little bit more through your grieving process. But I would recognize that 
you know, this is, this is the holiday season and it makes those kinds of losses more amplified. And so we tend to get in spaces where, oh, it's Thanksgiving and mom isn't here. Oh, it's Christmas and mom isn't here. Oh, it's New Year's and mom isn't here. And so there's that um, slightly um, it altered emotional baggage that's going to happen around this season, this time of year. So be nice to yourself while you're working on it. And, you know, it's all about doing something. Everything counts. And if you don't get it completely empty by the end of the year, don't give yourself a hard time. It's still all about just making progress. And so if you can get some of the uh, friends to come, uh, family to come, help you with some of it, if you can make some inroads into a room that you have now, that you've ignored for a while, and now you can go in and start working on it, great. And, And that's really, consider yourself successful if you get in there and get started and start moving some things around and don't get hung up on it has to be done by the end of the year well no she actually said uh, it's likely to be february before before she digs oh into okay mom's good space. yeah that's but good the, okay the good. year the year has gone by but yeah and so she's ready to think about it okay all right cool that's good and it's you know it'll be a perfect time to get started and unless there's some kind of fire drill i'm guessing it's in your house it's in her the suite is in your house and so yeah it's not going anywhere (laughs) so you can do it as fast or as slow as you need to be able to do it to accomplish it Um, find an accountability buddy for the year is another suggestion i'm going to make someone that you can ask to talk to you once a month at the beginning of the month to discuss the plans for the next few weeks and at the end of the month to discuss how your plans went in execution Um, make sure those calls happen and even if you have to report the inability to do anything you still want to make those calls It's all about cultivating support and accountability that's going to serve as motivation, especially if your own mental flogging of yourself isn't really working. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, having another person to talk about with, sometimes just having to make the call and go, I didn't get anything done, will be a motivation for you not to have to make that phone call again the next time. So find somebody that you can call and say, Oh, this is what I'm going to work on. Oh, I got half of that done, but not all of it. And so have that conversation with somebody out loud and and let it be support for you to keep going. And the last suggestion I'm going to make here is include in your plans in whatever style, the benefits that you expect to reap from your work, what positive things are going to happen, what positive thing is going to be true or what is going to be a reward for the work that you're doing. Write that down too. And this is this work is all as a benefit for you. Ultimately, you're all serving all of this organizing work is in service to you. So focus on the positive result that you expect to get after you complete the work. And we tend to go, oh God, I've got to clear out the doom room. Um, but you and, and we think about all of the work and how hard it's going to be, but we don't often focus also on won't it be great? This is going to be my guest room or my craft room, or I'm going to be able to go work in this office again, or I'm not going to be embarrassed to have people over or whatever the goal is, whatever end result that you're aiming for, remind yourself what that is, make it part of your plans, make it part of your lists so that you can say, oh yeah, it isn't just this sucks. <laughs> I hate working on it. It's that once I'm done, I'm going to have this room back for whatever purpose I wanted it for, or I'm going to have my friends over for dinner, fill in the blank, right? You want to have that in the back of your mind as a motivating vision to aim and get through the things that are hard. Can't wait to hear what they are. You guys got to come back and tell us what they are. Okay. Well, let's talk about next week for a moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, we realized that it's been a long time since we dug around in our mailbag to answer your questions or to discuss short topics that don't rate a full episode. So we're going to be back next week with what we call an Ask Us Anything episode. We've got many, many surveys to draw upon and, and suggestions people have made about what, they, what, what they'd like to hear us talk about. So it's going to be a cornucopia next week. Okay. Um, that will be Tuesday, December 5th. At the usual time, noon U.S. Central Time, we'll be live in Zoom and streaming on Facebook. Why don't you give us the tittle? Okay, this week's tittle is making a list, checking it at least twice. (laughs) This week's assignment is to begin making plans for your 2024 decluttering and organizing journey if you haven't already done so. Sounds like some of you are already on it. 
Identify one to three goals or objectives in the clutter realm that you'd like to accomplish in the coming year. Write down each objective at the top of a sheet or a page of notebook paper that you dedicated for this purpose. Be sure to describe the specific result or end state that you're envisioning. And for each of the targets that you've selected, write down one action item you'll need to carry out to move towards your goal. Revisit your list or list at least once a week between now and the new year to add additional action steps as they occur to you. Ultimately, we want you to have a goal and think about the first step. And if you can add a few more steps after that, awesome. <laughs> we just want you to have a starting point, a vision you're aiming for, and, and to be thinking about it for the next few weeks while you're going about all of your um, winter frivolity and <laughs> be have, mulling this stuff over in your mind. And we're, we're very specifically not calling it a resolution. If you want to call it a resolution, you can call it a resolution, but we're just calling it a goal or objective. Right. And it, it can be whatever it is for you. And we're going to be here for you to talk about it. So make your list and come and tell me later. Come back next week and tell us all about it. All right. If you're watching this on YouTube, we would love for you to join us live. We have so much fun in the live meeting. It's to receive true. notifications about upcoming events, we invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. You can also follow us on Facebook by visiting cfhou.com slash Facebook or join our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. We love to hear from you, so please keep your questions, comments, and topic suggestions coming in on YouTube, Facebook, or anywhere that you find us. You can always reach us through our website at clutterfairhouston.com. Thanks, everybody, for coming. We appreciate that um, you came back after we um, bailed on you last week. So <laughs> thank you for joining us. We missed you. And Ed is doing much better, as you can tell. Um, thank goodness for that. And, and we're sorry that somebody, so many of you have COVID right now. I hope yeah, that everybody seriously. gets well soon. And um, we can hear that you can write report back to us next week that you're feeling fine. So. We're crossing our fingers for you. We're thinking of you and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.